There are people saying Johnny Manziel will be bigger than LeBron James in Cleveland. I think that person is Skip Bayless. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely believed in you. He does. He be- he believed in you, and his thing to his credit, when he believes in a guy, yourself, Tim Tebow, Baker, Baker, yeah, Skip, <laughs> I love you, bro. Uh, I hope you know that uh, it was always love, and I I honestly feel like I let him down, right? Right. I remember watching first take religiously and being able to see him come on there and ride for me when everything was going on. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing the passion in his voice and the way he was animated when he would talk about me. Um, so when I sign, I go to Cleveland and this, you know, Johnny Manziel will be bigger than LeBron. Like, okay, you got your clickbait, you got your headlines for right. that week type of thing. And it was never, ever going to be a reality. Um, but because of me signing with LeBron and Mav, I had the opportunity to even be great in my own right. Right. They gave me the best fighting chance and built a team around me. And the thing that I realize now is the reason why they're probably still pissed at me to this day. They don't lose. They don't, they don't bet on anything that's not a sure thing. And what I did and the way I carried myself and the way that I was in my time during Cleveland was pure and blatant disrespect to them for giving me everything that I could have ever needed to be successful. So. Something that still to this day, I think now that we're talking about it, I haven't completely, truly got over yet, you know, how I let them down. Um, and I remember, and this is how bad off I was whenever I was in Cleveland. You know, LeBron would text me every week to come over to the house and watch a game or play poker with the boys and just tried to be there. And I was so depressed for the first time in my life that even my biggest role model and inspiration in my life couldn't get me out of bed to come and hang out with them. You know, when I went to the Cavs games, I went, I was in, I was out. I didn't really grasp and latch on um, to him in a way that I should have. And he tries to take me under his wing, right? And I'm just kind of nudging it away because of where my mental is and being just fully depressed and where I was in my life. Is that an excuse? Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, the respect that I should have for them, giving me everything, should trump all else. If I could say, Johnny, you could go back. What would probably be one of the two things that you wish you could do over? If I could go back to a certain point in time, I would drop myself right after that in the locker room of the Oklahoma game in the Cotton Bowl. Knowing what I know now, um, I would have known how to handle myself. I would have known how important and imperative it is to be a better teammate than just numbers on a field on Saturday. There's something to be said about how your guys ride for you when you're doing the right things in the building. Mm-hmm. And that 2013 year for us at Texas A&M, a lot of internal problems were happening because their leader is distracted. Their horse that makes this whole carriage go is fucked up. Mm. And the shame that I have for letting guys down like Cedric Aboye and like Jake Matthews and Mike Evans is the same shame that I carry with me to this day about letting down Joe Thomas as a guy who's in the end of his Hall of Fame career and is looking for somebody to come in and lead this team. And then you get me. It's tough. You know, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to have been the guy that have let down some overall really great athletes of my time and of my generation. Something I carry hopefully with my head high right now, but at the same time internally, I know it eats me alive um, because they did more for me than I gave in return to them. Mm -hmm. And what a shallow kind of selfish way of life that I was living at that point in time. And I have a lot of regret. Like I regret wasting a couple of Joe Thomas's last years in Cleveland. I regret disrespecting LeBron and and not making Taking sure advantage of the situation. That's making sure what it meant to me, showing him that I give a fuck enough to just do what's right, to listen to Mav and listen to the team they built around me. You know, it fucks me up that I messed up our second year at Texas A and M and we went seven and four or whatever because that was our chance to win a national We're title. We off the game against Duke. Had a cool game against Duke. One that was like a legendary kind of tale on it, but like I almost wish to this day that we lost that game because I would have came back. Right. 
So us having that legendary run against a bowl game that's kind of like, kind of wish we would have lost because then I would have came back with a vengeance. And I probably wouldn't have got drafted because I would have gotten in trouble. Right. But it doesn't sit right with me certain things. And those are three things. How I wasted my 2013 season, how I treated the legends in that building in Cleveland, and how I treated LeBron and Mav. And, you know, from there, I can even take it a step further and say in 2016, I don't think I treated Drake the way that I should have with representing the clothes that I was wearing and his OVO brand and his label and everything. You know, at that point in time, I was so selfish that I was dragging everybody that was tied to me through the mud. Now it's regret. I'm not harboring on this in this in any kind of way. I'm just calling it exactly what it, what it is in the way that I feel about it. And, you know, I owe those people apology. And hopefully one day down the line, I'll be able to have the opportunity as a man to be able to look them in the eye and be able to do that. As we sit here today, how is Johnny Manziel doing? Probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. And I think I went through a period of time after the documentary came out where I maybe acted a little bit like I did in the past. And it's easy to let ego and fame and stuff kind of creep back in. And what I've done now since really, you know, December-ish, you know, it's new three months, but I've insulated myself in a way with a team that I can trust, mm -hmm. people that I love, that are doing nothing but looking out for my best wishes, best regards. They know me. They're not letting me cheat. They're holding me accountable. And it's not going to happen overnight. It is going to be a slow, gradual process to get to who I want to be as a man. But in my opinion, sitting here today with you, enjoying the hell out of this conversation, so about. I feel like I'm on the right path to where I need to go. And as Johnny Manziel, not as Johnny Football. You were once married, and this is the last one, you were once married. Could you see yourself being married again, or is there someone in Johnny Manziel's life that's keeping Johnny grounded? Nope. It is, uh, it is my friends right now, my family. You know, it is my two nieces with a third one on the way that I talk to every single day on FaceTime mm -hmm. that are really my reason why I'm mm -hmm. still here. Right. Um, and a huge reason of my success is based off my sister and my mother and my father and my true core friends and my team I have around me. So love will come when it comes, but for right now I'm focused on getting a bag, taking care of my money, getting back to where I need to be, right. being the best brother, being the best uncle and being there for my family and my university in a way I need to be um, to make people proud that I wanna make proud. I don't wanna continuously keep letting people down when I feel like I'm destined for bigger, greater things than that in life. I am so proud that you're sitting here today and you found your reason to live. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before to something.